everyone and welcome to Chalk Talk, your source for Ohio State varsity athletics, news, updates, and analysis. I'm your host, Kaylee Rents, coming to you from the Lantern TV studios in Columbus, Ohio. I'm joined by senior Lantern reporter Andrew Todd Smith and Lantern TV's assistant sports director, Aaron Yerian. How's it going, guys? Wonderful. Great, thank you. Good. Well, we're going to start off tonight with some news about the women's basketball team. Senior guard Raven Ferguson has been dismissed from the team for a violation of team rules. Andrew, can you tell us a little bit about this? Absolutely, yes. Uh, so Raven Ferguson, of course, a senior guard contributor for the Buckeyes coming off the bench last year. She was in double-digit scoring in 17 games. She was up for the Big Ten sixth player of the conference. Um, she was second in scoring during conference play for the Buckeyes, so it is a significant loss for them. She was figuring to be a leader on this team, you know, coming into her fourth season here under Coach McGuff, who we got word from when the press release went live. I'll let the um, release speak for itself, um, but I will add that you know, Raven's a good kid and somebody that you know I enjoyed coaching for a year and, and wish I could have coached for longer and, and um, impacted for longer. And yeah, I still think that she can do um, either here at Ohio State as a student where she'll have an opportunity to graduate if she wants to stay here or transfer to another school. She's got a chance to, to still move on and do good things. Uh, very surprising week for the Buckeyes, but you know, in a good sense, Ohio State did beat Cincinnati on Saturday. So, guys, can you give us a little bit of background during that game? Well, Kaylee, on Saturday, the Ohio State Buckeyes beat the Cincinnati Bearcats. It was a final score of 50-28. to 28. And one of the most important things that I noticed for the first time this season was that the offense really found its rhythm early in the game. Cincinnati went up when their, with the first series 7 to nothing, but then the Buckeyes tied it up and then kind of pulled away for a little while. JT Barrett was named the co-Big Ten Freshman of the Week. He was 26 for 36, 330 yards, four touchdowns. The offensive line showing a little bit of improvement. He only had one sack this time. He also had 14 rushes for 83 yards. They were going no huddle. They were getting back to the line. Their subs were coming in and out. Some of their scoring drives were only a little over two minutes in length, and they, they're going almost the length of the field. You're absolutely right in that the offense found its rhythm. They were efficient. They were relatively error-free. We ended up having the uh, Curtis Samuel fumble when they were trying to fix something that wasn't really broken. Um, Ezekiel Elliott was a workhorse for the Buckeyes. He had 233 all-purpose yards, 112 of which came after first contact from the Cincinnati defense. So what I noticed watching the game is he would experience people trying to tackle him, and he's not necessarily a slippery runner, but he was just powering forward, you know, being able to, to pull out a nine-yard run out of what looked like it would be done after five yards. Devin Smith but continues to be the redemption tail because he has a drop early, and then he scores a touchdown or has a big pass play from JT Barrett later on in the game. So Aaron, again, you touched on it. The short drives, the Buckeyes able to come out of the gate and just establish their offensive identity and build momentum. But as we saw, you know, they kind of took their foot off the gas there a little bit in the second quarter after a very efficient performance and mounting a significant lead on an intrastate rival. Finally, now moving into Big Ten play after the Cincinnati game, they're finally getting into the rhythm. They're getting brilliant on the basics and they're moving forward with the offense which is good because the pass defense is not necessarily as advertised. Chris Moore, Cincinnati's receiver, three receptions. Every time he caught the ball was a touchdown. He had three touchdowns, 221 yards receiving. Aaron, you're spot on. The secondary was exposed in this game. Buckeye Nation may not want to hear it, but this pass defense hadn't been tested yet. Urban Meyer talked about it. He said this was the first big game in which the secondary was going to face a significant threat, and they came up short. Eli Apple got burned on a number of plays. Mikhail McKay and Chris Moore for the Cincinnati Bearcats, they were switching sides between X and Z, really throwing the secondary for a loop on a number of occasions and getting burned deep. Von Bell, I feel, had a strong game in terms of tackling in space, roving as a free safety, but he can't do it all. The cornerbacks are bearing the brunt of this pass-happy attack that Cincinnati had. But Joey Boza and that defensive line, this core of linebackers, they're really 
compensating and making up for the inefficiencies of the secondary. Aaron, what did you see on Saturday that is sort of a bright spot from a defensive standpoint? One of the things they do well is apply pressure to the quarterback. That comes in the form of Joey Bosa when he comes off the end. He's an extremely explosive, dynamic player. And in the Cincinnati game, he hit Gunnar Keel so hard that he drops the ball, forces the safety, almost a touchdown. Ohio State comes back, they get the ball on the, on the free kick. They score another touchdown. He has had three forced fumbles so far this season, of which Ohio State has scored 23 points off of. I mean, Joey Bosa, absolutely getting it done for the Buckeyes. They have strong play from their linebackers, but he's that X factor on this, this defensive line. You know, he started to emerge late last year, and you just don't know when he's going to come up with a game-changing play, and he did it against Virginia Tech. He caused a sack fumble of Brewer, and here you see him doing it again. Gunnar Keel, polished passer, mm -hmm. getting plenty of time from his offensive line, but he was so good in that game, you know, slicing and dicing Ohio State secondary, he didn't really need a whole lot of time, but Boza was still able to get to him. So I totally agree with you that he is a playmaker, and he actually was pretty forthcoming about what we can expect in terms of what the Maryland offense is going to pose to this Buckeye defense. Well, they have a tricky offense, and it's been it's been a little rough adjusting, but today was a much better pra practice for me at least. Mm -hmm. Throw a lot of screens, so we're going to have to stop that first before we could get any pressure. They just are going to screen us all day, try to slow down our rush, but if we focus and play good defense against that, then we'll get to rush. Of course, it's a big game. They've been talking about how it's the biggest game in their school history or whatever, but every game's a big game for us. Most of the defensive calls are called by Coach Fick, so it's Coach Johnson's job just to teach us and to perfect what Coach Fickle wants to run. He mentioned the screen pass game, which is going to be sort of what Maryland turns to to really, you know, churn up some offensive yardage. What do you think Buckeye fans have to look forward to in terms of the matchups that the defense are going to see on Saturday? Along with the screen pass, you have the quarterback. And this week it's going to be kind of a game time decision which one starts. You have Maryland has CJ Brown, who is kind of the dual threat, run and pass kind of guy. And then you have his backup, Caleb Rowe, who is really the pocket passer on the team. And last week he led Maryland over against Indiana to the victory in, in Indiana. Who the previous week? The previous week they had upset Missouri. Exactly, who then came back the next week and beat South Carolina. So we, we have no idea what to expect, who, which team is going to show up with all these matchups going the opposite way you might have expected. So yeah. I, I do think that that quarterback decision is, is – going to determine the level of Buckeyes' success on Saturday because Joey Bosa told us on Wednesday that they've game planned for C.J. Brown primarily in terms of scout film. So if they bring in Caleb Rowe and he starts to you know, find some time in the pocket, we could be in for an interesting matchup. Maybe not quite the offensive shootout we saw on Saturday against the Bearcats, but I think, I think we should be prepared for a pretty high-scoring game. I'm predicting more of a... 35-28, and some people may think that's a high scoring game. I, I don't. I do think that this game is going to be less of the shootout that people expected from Cincinnati. You know, Gunnar Keel coming in here, people didn't know what to expect. The pass defense, we talked about it. They got burned. Three pass breakups, that's not going to cut it if you're going for long bombs downfield. That's not what we're going to see from this Maryland attack. So, having said that, Ohio State, you mentioned early in the, in the bit that they have found their rhythm. I don't think that changes just because they're going into College Park on Saturday. First Big Ten home game for the Terrapins, billed by some to be the biggest game in their, their school's history, the number 20 team coming into the nation, sellout crowd. I think it's going to be an electric environment, even though it's a noon game. But I do think the Buckeyes take control and assert their dominance in the third quarter. I think that's when they start to pull away. We could have a close game at halftime, but I'm thinking... 45 to 31 in favor of the visitors. So I think that wraps up most of our football analysis. I see you taking notes. You're going to hold me accountable next week. I am. But uh, I, I do one, one final note. I think we should mention Cole Farrand, mm. the linebacker. 
he is going to be, as Joey Boza is for the Buckeyes, he's going to be that X-factor player where if he has another huge game like he did against Indiana, 19 tackles, it's unheard of. So if he has a big game and stifles Ezekiel Elliott, you know, they, they bottled up Tevin Coleman from Indiana. So be interesting to see if, if Ohio State gets the rushing attack on pace early, and then we'll see what they're able to accomplish from there. But, Kaylee, let's – Let's uh, be done with football and go to the other brand of football. What do you have for us in the realm of men's soccer? Well, with men's soccer, they actually played Saturday and they actually lost to the Dayton Flyers with the 1-0 loss that was scoreless up until the second half. And um, that was really disappointing for the Buckeyes because that, that's their third match in a row that they had lost. Really, it has nothing to do with the defense. And that's something that we you know, always stress, like, oh, you're getting scored on, so it's defense. It's not because these four guys in the back are very impressive. You know, you have senior Liam Doyle. You have uh, Hunter Robinson, who's a freshman, coming in. They're just making incredible plays. And Alex Ivanov, the senior goaltender, obviously, you know, just a killer back there. So it just wasn't expect we weren't expecting it. And then Tuesday night, they go and they travel to Louisville, Kentucky, and they play uh, the number five team in the nation with Louisville Cardinals. And they end up beating them 1-0. And Yanni Saris actually took the game-winning goal in the 33rd minute of that game to just bring the Buckeyes out victorious. I certainly expected Louisville to have more offensive punch, but the Buckeyes, of course, able to get the better of them. You mentioned Jensen. He had that goal against Akron. So yeah. it's good to see that they're – not only relying on the possession game, we had talked earlier in the week about Mason and Saris being that sort of anchor in the midfield, but it's good to see that they're incorporating other tools and being defensively stout in the process. And, you know, quality victory on the road there for the Buckeyes. So interesting to see how they translate that into hopefully future success. Yeah, and the Buckeyes will be you know, maybe having future success with the game on Saturday, and they will be taking on uh, Michigan State Spartans. They will be taking them on at 7 p.m. on Saturday. The women's soccer team able to get a 3-1 to one victory over the visiting Northwestern Wildcats on Sunday. Michelle Prince back in the lineup, rejoining the team for that Illinois matchup. Unfortunately, that was a loss for the Buckeyes, but she had a strong game in the midfield on Sunday. She was able to provide an assist to freshman Sammy Edwards at the forward position, who got the Buckeyes on the board early. Then we had Kayla Varner scoring, assisted by Nicole Miyashiro, the sophomore. And finally, Alexis Degler, another midfielder, again, kind of touching on that recurring theme of them being strong in that middle third. She was able to get an 88th minute goal. It was a very impressive game possession-wise for the Buckeyes. It was good to see them kind of assert their dominance in the midfield, and I know that's a, a Touching point for Coach Lori Walker in terms of wanting to be aggressive and play their own brand of soccer. The focus today was really much more about us. Um, there have been a lot of little things that we haven't been doing, and uh, one of the biggest things I challenged our team with today was uh, getting pressure higher up on the field because that's been a huge problem for us is just errant services coming in and putting our back line under a tremendous amount of pressure. So I thought we did a much better job um, of applying that pressure sooner and limiting those services. But, uh, we're getting better. You know, I say we got to get better 1% each game, and, and uh, I saw some bright spots in our match today. Well, the beauty of Nichelle is that no matter where she is on the field, she's a threat. And so um, a goal scorer of her nature, she puts a ton of pressure on herself to score goals. And, you know, right now what I've just said to her is, hey, let's, let's get your body, you know, back used to playing. It's been six weeks since she's uh, competed on a regular basis. And, and so sorting that out for her and getting her comfortable and getting her making the right runs, the goals will come for Nichelle. I'm not worried about that. Uh, it feels good, so good to be back with the team and being able to play. Um, I've been kind of a support on the sideline and watching and learning a lot about our players. And We just wanted to defend as a team today. We wanted to be really connected, win the ball up high in, in their field so that we can play more on their side of the field and get more shots. We saw Nikki Waltz, the freshman, normally playing in that midfielder position, coming out wide and going forward. So a little bit of a mix up there, but they were obviously very stout defensively, something that we haven't seen from the Buckeyes. Um, of late, they outshot Northwestern 14-11 on the game and 10-3 in terms of shots on goal. So very impressive showing from the Buckeyes offense, and they will be facing the number 12 Wisconsin Badgers on the road on Friday and then traveling to Minneapolis to take on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. 
Now looking a bit into the world of cross country, the men's team was the only team to compete this past weekend in Falcon Heights, Minnesota, where they actually placed 22nd overall, but had Nick Ellswick finish 23rd overall. So, you know, according to uh, coach Bryce Allen, they didn't execute their race plan tactic well. They actually just kind of lagged behind in the first 800 meters. So that's something that the Buckeyes are going to look to improve on in practices coming this week as they do have this weekend off. But the women's team will be traveling to Notre Dame, Indiana, and they will be racing in the Notre Dame Invitational. So, you know, I'll have to see how the Lady Buckeyes fare in that match. Of course, Katie Borchers, we're going to expect big things from her. She's setting the bar high for herself. So it'll be interesting to see the results from Notre Dame. Definitely, we'll have to look at that at those results when they come in. The women's field hockey team, they're on the verge of being a very competitive squad, but they can't quite finish. Several weeks ago, we talked to Liz Tamburo. She said that was a point of emphasis down in Athens. So anyway, moving forward, they faced then number seven, Nittany Lions. Emma Royce able to score a goal on an assist off a penalty corner from Peanut Johnson and Maddie Humphrey. Brooke Hilt, a new name that we haven't seen a whole lot, the sophomore, able to score a goal as well. And Caitlin Wagner was able to get the third goal for the Buckeyes off a penalty stroke when Maddie Humphrey crashed into the Penn State goalkeeper. The head coach of the Nittany Lions not very happy with the call at the time. Coach Wilkinson had said a week ago that Penn State is a quick team and they lived up to that billing. It was a 1-1 tie and they ended up scoring two back-to-back -back goals inside the span of a minute midway through the first half to take a 3-1 lead. Penn State struck again with the first goal of the second half off a penalty corner and it was one of the seven chances that they had to do so. Um, so not great on the conversion side but possession was absolutely skewed. We saw the, the defensive half was really unoccupied for the most part and the Nittany Lions were aggressive the whole game. They shot 19 times and Liz Tamburo previously mentioned she had seven saves. So the women struggling a little bit, three and six record, 0 and two in the conference. Doesn't get any easier guys. 3.30 game on Friday in the same area as the football team. Um, they will be taking on the number two Maryland Terrapins and then they follow that up with a road contest at number three Virginia. So doesn't get any easier for Ann Wilkinson and her players, but transitioning to a different type of hockey as we begin the month of October, the winter sports are beginning to start their preliminary seasons. Kaylee, the women's hockey, ice hockey team of course, in action in exhibition play this weekend. We had some action from the men's in terms of Big Ten media days. What do you have for us in that department? Well, the Lady Buckeyes opened their 2014-2015 campaign with a 2-2 draw against, um, in, well, in overtime, against Western Ontario in an exhibition matchup this past weekend. So we had two goals. One came in from Katie Matheny, and uh, she scored the Buckeyes with an assist from Claudia Kepler. And Claudia Kepler would come in again with another assist. Julia McKinnon, who is a uh, junior for the Buckeyes, she came in with another goal, and Claudia Kepler assisted that. Now in the world of men's ice hockey, we actually saw that they had a Big Ten media day and uh, they just kind of discussed basically their game plan for the season. I guess the biggest thing I'm looking to see is uh, how we react after the end of last year. You know, how hungry the guys are. Otherwise you have some teams that are hungry and, and we're so close that uh, they put the effort in this summer and I think that's what you want to build on. You know, losing in a big championship game like that. So, I know I think you know, that's driven us over the summer to, you know, come back in shape, ready to go. I think uh, we have a great opportunity ahead of us, and uh, we do have a great team. So just looking forward to getting started here. So, yeah, it's, it's incredibly motivating. And uh, with the experience group that we have, you know, we, don't, we didn't lose too many guys. The guys that we, that we lost uh, were, were, you know, big contributors to the program. But uh, we got a lot of guys back. We got a lot of seniors, a lot of juniors, um, so we got no, no excuse for not getting back to where we were last year. So a lot of people wondering where this, where's the scoring going to come from for these Ohio State Buckeyes, and so you know, looking forward to seeing how the Buckeyes are going to do, especially with the disappointing end of their season, losing to the Wisconsin Badgers in the Big Ten final. Tanner Fritz has said that it kind of left a bad taste in their mouth. You know, they're looking to kind of just get better. Uh, we're actually going to get to see Ohio State begin their exhibition play this weekend and they're going to be playing Gulf University from Ontario. So get some Canadian hockey in there. A lot of the guys are from Canada so going to be great to see them play some uh, fellow Canadians from Ontario and uh, they'll, they'll also be hosting you know the next weekends they'll be uh, for 
Uh, October 10th and 11th, they'll be hosting Providence, which is ranked number two in the country. So kind of a tough, you know, really tough exhibition games for Ohio State, but we're looking for some great games from them. So there's lots of Buckeye action coming up and even heading into the football bye week. And just stay tuned right here as we're going to give you as many highlights as possible, plus player interviews. That's what we do. And feel free to join us, of course, at Chalk Talk OSU on Twitter. And if you'd like to join the conversation, send us a question, chime in. Hashtag CTOSU, and of course, we'll be back, as you said, Aaron, next week with lots of footage and your latest in Buckeye Athletics. Kaylee? Well, I'm Kaylee Renz for Andrew Todd Smith and Aaron Yarian. Thank you and goodbye.